What's up everybody? So we're back on the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday. Now of course, this one's releasing on a Sunday, but if you're watching it after the fact, just assume that it released on a Tuesday. But, you know, it is what it is. It was really, really hot outside. I wanted to make sure and keep myself healthy, so I worked on this build in increments, you know, 30 minutes here, 45 minutes there, an hour here, to be able to make sure and get it wrapped up and get y'all a good video. Now, what are we working on? Of course, this guy right here. I'm not showing you this part because that's the handle. Technically, you've seen the thumbnail, but I don't want to give y'all any close-ups until we get to the end of the video. In this episode, we need to go ahead, file the shoulders of the bolster where it goes down into the tang, get that nice and even, get our tang refined, go ahead and get our handle done, get it attached, get our edge put on here, and get this thing finished. It's really, really sharp. I think that y'all are going to like the way it looks. I think it's a, a good profile and everything, so... Let's go ahead, let's jump into it, get this thing knocked out. So now that we've got our block cut out, we need to go ahead and figure out where exactly the tang is going to sit. And remember, because I typically make these handles slightly proud of the bolster, I need to make sure that I am leaving enough room at the top and bottom to have that excess after we get done shaping it. Should be good right there. And then all we got to do, move it up just a hair, just like that. Mark out where our tang is going to go. So it's going to sit right there. So we're going to mark a center line, mark where we're going to drill through, and then basically I'm going to come through here once I get it in the little vise for the drill press. We're going to come in at an angle, drill down to here, come on this side, drill down to there at that angle, and then we're going to drill down the center and we're going to connect those two outer holes. You'll see that once we get over there. But right now, we're just going to mark the center and then figure out where we're going to go here. So one of the things that I just got done doing was I went over to the 2x72 and made sure that this was square. Now, the cool thing about Oleg is he does grind all these nice and smooth and square. So the only thing that I needed to square up was the area that I removed here. But all of these sides are super square on here so we're good on all four sides now everything is nice and square now we can go through and we can mark the center of this block okay so that's the center I'm going to come in with the sharpie and just make sure that I can define that line a little bit more. Okay. Now what I need to do is go ahead and mark the top and bottom of the tang. Now what we're going to do is just take these lines that are right here 
and we're just going to bring them across just like that and then we can go ahead scribe them to make them darker So that is the center and the top and bottom of the tang. So now what we need to do is just come in here, drill a hole, drill a hole, drill a hole in the center, connect them, open them up, and then we'll go on to the vise and we'll clean everything up and make it all nice and square. Once we get done drilling these holes and cleaning everything up, then we'll go ahead and we'll drill the pinhole that's going to go through the tang while it's still square like this and I'll talk about that more when we get to that step but now let's go ahead drill and start opening that tang hole So now that we have those three holes drilled right there, we're just going to connect them by going in the center hole and just opening it up. So just tilting it back and forth. So now we want to go through and open up this hole a little bit. We were able to get it to right there just off the drill bits so definitely not bad I pretty much just need to open it up just a little bit and square off these rounded corners that are right here so I'm gonna start off with a little square file right here and get those square you'd be surprised at how much work these little files do that far just off of something as simple as these little bitty files. So now I'm going to switch this round one. So now that we have the tang fitting in there all nice and snug, you know, you're looking for it to fit snug and not have a bunch of, you know, shakiness happen in there. You don't want it wiggling and wobbling side to side. You want it to fit nice and snug in there. So now what we've got to do is we've got to match the face of this up to the bolster area. It's really good, but there is still a slight gap on this side over here. And what that's from is this section right here is just a hair high. So I haven't squared this off 100% to the bolster yet. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to remove a little bit from this corner, try it out, and keep doing it until it fits nice and snug and flush against that bolster area. So now we have the same gap all the way around in between the bolster and the face of the handle here. We'll remove a little bit of this lip here 
So remove some of that and that will actually help us sit flush. And the reason why we're removing this is because again, the tang has a bevel that goes from the tang down into the bolster where it rounds a little bit so that there's no sharp edges in there. So we just need to remove a little bit of this lit, round it off, and then that'll let it to where it sits nice and flush on there. Now we're nice and snug all the way around. No gapping, anything like that. So now what we can go ahead and do is get ready to drill this hole. Now, one of the things that I need to do prior to drilling this hole is I need to make sure that the block is square to the actual blade. And right now, it is not. If you can see it right here, you can see that the bottom of this corner sticks out further than the top. So one of the things that I need to do is I need to square off the sides here. I'm not worried about the top and the bottom because all that's going to end up getting rounded and all that stuff. All I need to do is make sure that these sides are nice and square so that whenever I put this down to drill through it, we're drilling through square to the actual blade so that the pin matches on this side and this side. It's not up or even in the center here, but then to top or bottom over here because it went through at an angle. You want to make sure that this is square to the actual bolster and the blade and then we can drill that hole. Now one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mark a straight line from the blade down through the handle material here. What that's going to do is that's going to make sure that I know that I'm centered throughout here because like I said I'm not removing anything from the top or the bottom. I'll just shape that when we start profiling but I do want to make sure that I have a center line so that I know how much material I need to remove from this side or this side and keep everything nice and centered because let's say that this line comes down but the tang wasn't perfectly straight or the hole inside here wasn't perfectly straight and the handle got shifted off to the side and I go and profile it and shape it what could happen is the butt of this handle right here could be kicked off to the side and not centered all the way through the tip of the blade so we need to make sure, mark that center line to see if we need to remove some material from this side or this side. Make sure that that's centered. And then we need to come down here and remove material from the sides until they're even with the bolster on both sides. So that's the next few steps here. Draw that line and start grinding. Okay, so that's what we have to remove right there. All the way back to this line, a little bit off this corner here. All the way back to that line, a little bit off this corner here. And then we will end up being square to the bolster and ready to drill that hole. So we just gotta remove all that material there and we'll be good to go. So now we can go ahead and mark the tang where it's going to sit. We don't have to get too crazy with this because I have a whole lot of tang to drill through. 
and we're going to be using this teal mint green pin right here which is actually really small eighth of an inch got plenty of tang to drill through so even if no matter where it really hits here we're gonna be fine but now that we know roughly where it's at there go ahead and go in here center it within the actual block So that's what we're going to be drilling the pinhole. Should go right through the tang. The tang is soft, so all we really got to do is drill through this, hit the tang, mark it whenever we with the drill bit as we're drilling through. Then we'll pull the blade out, finish drilling this hole, and then we'll drill the blade separately. That way that blade doesn't make our bit walk and open up this hole too much. We want to just come down until it hits the blade and it marks it. Pull that out, finish drilling through the nice soft wood, and then drill through the harder material by itself, and they should match up. And we're going to end up making the hole inside the tang a little bit larger than this anyways, so it'll have plenty of room to mess around in there. So now we need to go ahead and start profiling the handle. I'm going to go ahead and bring this whole front section down to meet that line that we drew that is the actual profile of the bolster. We're going to grind down to it just on the outside of that line and then we'll go ahead and profile the handle off of that. It's going to be a pretty sleek handle, nothing too crazy, not a bunch of contouring, just something that looks real good. So. That's the goal. When you start doing that, we're going to use this 36 grit belt to get rid of a lot of it, and then we'll start switching to other belts after that as we go up. We'll probably finish with the last belt being a like 400 grit belt in a slack platen area. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to show you the whole entire process. So what I'm going to start doing here is we're going to come in and now that I have this whole entire section just brought down to where I want it to be, we're going to come in here vertical and we're just going to grind down the sides to match this. We're going to be contouring it as we do that because what's going to end up happening is this whole entire spine here of this is going to be contoured to match the area up here. So we're just going to come in, contour, and flatten it out a little bit because we need to make this whole entire section meet this. So when we neck it down right here, all of this material has got to get removed. You'll see that as we start doing it, but we're going to be doing it vertical. And then we'll go ahead and start profiling some of the other stuff here.
Now, if you've watched any of my videos where I talk about handle ergonomics, you'll know that one of my biggest pet peeves is the the broom handle profile, basically where you have a square block and you just knock the corners off of it. I don't like that. It's not a big thing for me. That's basically what this is. If this was just a rectangle and you just took a router and you routed the four corners off of it and then sanded it and hold it done, you would have a handle like this. I don't like that. I'm not going to do that to this one. So what I think I'm going to do is change the profile of the back a little bit and just kind of taper it to the back. It's, this is not a chopper, so I'm not going to be chopping down on this. I am going to leave this little uh, pinky choil right here in this little area. But I think that I'm going to taper the handle actually towards the back here and narrow this down a little bit so that I can give this little area that's right here a nice clean contour for where your pinky would go around it. I think that's what I'm going to do. So now I've got my platen frame set to a 45 degree angle and we got a little slight belt area because I took the platen off. We're going to go ahead and get rid of some of these deeper 36 grit grinding lines. I mean the handle is looking great just as it is. I just want to smooth it out just a little bit more and these slight belts are perfect for that. They flex into all the little nooks and grooves and everything like that. We're going to go ahead, get everything cleaned up and get it ready to start hand sanding. So now that we're done with the scallop bill, we can go ahead and start hand sanding this. I'm going to start off with my KH Daily, my Kyle Daily little sanding stick that we have here. This is awesome. It's micarta. It's got a nice little rounded section here and then a nice flat sharp corner section here. We're going to get in here with the rounded section and get into this little kind of pinky choil area right here and just get in there with some 220 grit sandpaper and just finish rounding that out. And all I'm doing is just coming in here with some circular little motion here and I'm bringing it down to here. I'm rounding it out. I'm not just sitting here doing this. I'm bringing it flat 
and then back down, flat back down. That's going to get rid of any sharp edges and make it nice and contoured with the belly of this handle. Now that's good on that side. We can switch over to the other side. Same thing, same motion. Now we can go ahead and go up to the 400 grit. Now we can go ahead and go up to 600 grit. So now we can buff it with some green compound. So we got our two-part epoxy, just JB Weld epoxy with some black dye in it. It's a personal preference of mine. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll know I like to add the, the dye to it. And you make it mix really well, but not too crazy with it because when it's 100 something degrees in your shop, it's going to dry really fast. So got that mixed up. Need to go ahead and Pour it down into the tang or into the, the hole we made in the handle that the tang is going to go into. Just pour it down in there. Our tang fits pretty tight, but you still want to go ahead and make sure you get plenty in there. You would rather it come out a little bit than then have not enough and it start drying. So should be good there. It's coming out the sides. Go ahead. This goes in. Pull it out. I want a little bit more inside that area where the tang meets the bolster. Just add a little bit in there. And you might be thinking to yourself, man, that's real messy. All that's going to come off with acetone. So don't worry about any of that stuff. Got it in there. We can go ahead, stick it in our little clamp. I really like this clamp for this. There we go. Get it clamped onto there. Get our pin in the hole. Make sure we get that epoxy moved around in there. That would clean up a lot of that excess. We'll clean it up before we start using acetone. Just clean it up with some dry rags or paper towels. Because it's going to be pretty easy to remove right now with just this. And then we'll come in with just a little bit of acetone and clean off the rest of it. And if you got a bunch on your floor, try and clean your floor up. Uh, 
That's code word for I got a bunch on my floor. Now that that's completely sanded down, we're gonna go ahead, go up to our 400 grit and get rid of any of these sanding lines. Now on to the 600 grit. So when it comes to the sharpening process on this particular build, all I did was a 800 grit sharpening belt from Pro Sharpening Supply. And then I went on to their leather stropping belt that they have. Both of these are made for the 1x30. I really like this system. It's really inexpensive and it works real well to get a good edge on this, which you're going to see in just a minute. I've already cut it once. We're going to try and cut it again. probably do it one more time <laughs> but I risk hitting this so we're not gonna we're not gonna do that but that definitely works all right guys let's go ahead and wrap this shop talk Tuesday up here now of course you saw in the sharpness test the little slicing through the paper towel tube that it's sharp it's really really sharp and it can cut through paper towel tube like a champ now when it comes to the style of this I think it turned out real nice there's a couple of things that I picked for different reasons on this and the, I'm going to tell you the, the number one reason why I picked the handle material on this was really because of a very small thing that I was hoping was going to work out and it really really did and that was matching up this texture that you have right here where everything is, is pinched together right here it pinches and it creates this texture to the grain of the handle here so matching all this little stuff that goes through here into this on both sides so that these flow together throughout here. It's a subtle thing, but that was one of the things that I wanted to do. I love this handle material. It's got a nice little blue fleck inside the grain there. And then of course we have our you know, turquoise pins. Nice subtle handle profile that tapers back to the butt of it nice little hook here not too aggressive not too crazy the handle profiles straight on here it's not like super brought down like a pistol grip or something like that the cool thing about a integral bolster knife when it comes to knives like this especially chef's knives and things like that is this creates a really good pinch area you can just pitch that little area right there super comfortably and then go down chop rock do whatever you got to do i did make it high enough that if you needed to chop like this you're not going to hit your knuckles on the, the cutting board or a chopping block but i really like this because you could chop it like this use it like this and use that pinch grip as opposed to a chopping grip but i think that turned out real nice i like the little rhino swedge on the front there it's looking good you know one of the things that again I wanted to have on this with all my integral bolster knives this whole entire area the whole bolster area is forged no grinder touch that so everything down into the heel of this all of that's forged the whole bolster area is forged then of course we got a nice tight fit up 
all the way around that with the handle being slightly proud of it just slightly wider I like to do that on my integrals this turned out to be a really nice knife it's subtle nothing too crazy looks real clean and it's super sharp y'all let me know what y'all think about it because I was at the very beginning of this I was thinking again I even mentioned it will this be the taste of everybody else will this be something that everybody likes no it's a different profile but I wanted y'all to wait until y'all actually saw it in the end now tell me do you think it turned out good do you think it is ugly would you do something different always interested to hear those or comments in the comment section leave those down below now when it comes to the next build that we're working on I am making a really big knife so I'm about to start working on of course samurai stuff but the next actual shop talk Tuesday build is gonna have like a 15 inch long blade it is gonna be beefy it's gonna be huge and it's gonna be a fun forging project so hopefully y'all looking forward to that big knife 15 inch blade it's gonna be killer so that's gonna happen on Tuesday that's gonna be the two next shop talk Tuesday build series I think y'all are gonna like it. it's gonna have a through tang it's gonna have a bunch of cool little stuff on it so hopefully y'all are excited about that one now guys that's the end of this video make sure you get a thumbs up make sure you subscribe y'all have an amazing day y'all stay safe out there and I'll catch y'all next time